One sign of a good trader is when they take a consistent approach to their trading rules, which they repeat again and again and again. Having that consistency means you get a good statistically significant idea of how well your trading strategy's rules really perform. If on the other hand you're continually changing your rules, you never give your system a chance to prove whether it really works or not in the live markets. The investable attribute that we're going to look at today concentrates on this concept of consistency in approach and rules. Let's take a look. One of the investable attributes that measures consistency on the Darwin X platform is that of positive return consistency and negative return consistency. And these can be accessed either from the top of the screen here or by clicking on the tab that you see here. And this particular strategy that we're looking at scores highly for both positive return and negative return consistency with scores of 9.2 in each. Now, this attribute measures the behavioral patterns associated with the closure of positions in the trader's strategy. And to do that, it looks at the level of concentration of the returns in terms of pips. So in other words, it performs a cluster analysis to determine the consistency. And in the chart below, the green bubbles represent profitable positions, while the red are losing positions. So on the x-axis here, the origin is in the center, and all values to the right are number of pips for those winning positions, and then the negative values along here represent the losing. And on the y-axis, we have the position duration. And you can easily see the details of each of these just by hovering over each position. Now, you might be wondering if using pips for this type of analysis is the best way, since pips will vary greatly between assets. But again, this is all built into the underlying algorithm so that an adjustment is made that standardizes the values so that they are comparable across different assets and asset classes. Now, the greater the consistency and the easier it is to identify patterns in the returns is indicative of systematic decision-making on the part of the trader. And this therefore results in higher scores. Now, the reasoning behind the fact that this attribute is actually split up into two scores, one for negative return consistency and one for positive return consistency, is because of the fact that it's likely different rules have been used to close a losing position, so for example, a stop loss, compared to the rules to close profitable positions. And so it makes sense to attempt an analysis of those different rules separately. And to do this, the clustering analysis looks for different patterns on either side of the y-axis. And so in this system that we see here, we can see definite patterns where there's a high level of consistency for the majority of the positions that were executed. And that's why this strategy results in such a high score. Let's now compare this to a different strategy that scores just 0.7 for the positive return consistency and 1.9 for negative return. And the reason for this is clear. You can see that there's no discernible pattern between the positions either on the positive side or the negative side. Just to be clear, a poor score here doesn't necessarily mean that the trader isn't sticking to their rules. There may well be other factors that do show high levels of consistency. And indeed, in the next episode, I'll be looking at one of these, which is duration consistency. So it's always a good idea when looking at the scores of a strategy to look at the duration and return consistencies together to get a full picture of the consistency being implemented by the trader. Now, the algorithm behind this investable attribute doesn't just use the number of pips per position in its calculation. It also gives a weighting to the decisions based on their position sizes. And you can get a good indication of this by looking at the size of each of the bubbles. Now, you might be wondering 
what the implication of this is if a trader was implementing multiple strategies in the same account. Because here, surely, even if the trader was acting consistently, this would result in multiple clusters depending on the individual rules of each of those strategies. But that is taken into account as well. So let's return to our original strategy. And here you can clearly see that there are actually two clusters here in the negative return. And moving over to the positive, there might also be a similar pattern here. And so the underlying algorithm takes full account of this. And where there are multiple clusters, that does not detract from the score of these attributes. Now, as I said before, this is not the only way that DarwinX measures consistency in the trading strategies. There's a completely separate investable attribute called duration consistency. And quite often you find that traders who don't perform well in one area do perform well in the other, proving that they do have a systematic approach to their trading rules. But more on that next time. In the meantime, if you want to take a look at the DarwinX platform in more detail, you can do that by following the link you can see top right now. But that's all we've got time for in this episode. Be sure to tune in next time, and until then, trade safe.